So in the previous video, we looked at the upstream signaling down to RAS, so from the tyrosine kinase receptor through, um, through GRB2 and SOS down to RAS. So we looked at how RAS is activated from upstream. And now we're going to have a quick look at some of the signaling downstream from RAS. So once RAS is activated, these are some of the effects that RAS can drive in the cell. So um, we're going to look at two of these pathways. So I'm going to briefly describe um, the MAP kinase pathway leading to gene activation. And then I'll briefly describe the um, um, phosphoinositol 3 kinase pathway that leads to activation of protein kinase B. So um, we'll just have a look at this bit of pathway here and then a little bit about this bit of pathway here. And um, the, these pathways can lead to um, various um, phenotypic changes within the cell. Um, there are other pathways downstream of RAS, but um, we just don't have time to look at, at too many things. So the first thing to look, we're going to look at is the activation of the RAF protein. So not RAS, but RAF. Okay. Now, RAF, MEC, and ERK form a pathway. And this pathway leads directly to the activation of gene expression because ERK is a transcription factor. Okay? And this kind of pathway is highly conserved over um, eukaryotic cells. So everything from yeast through to human cells all have what's called the MAP kinase pathway. And the MAP kinase pathway consists of three kinases that, that each activate it themselves. So um, RAF is the first kinase, MEC is the second kinase, and ERK is the second kinase. The way of describing these is that we, we call RAF, it's the MAP, so the mitogen activated protein kinase, but it's, it's, the, it's not the first, the second, it's the third kinase, so it's the, it's the top level kinase. So it's referred to as MAP KKK. Okay? And that this activates the next um, MAP kinase, and because it's the second one down, it's referred to as the MAP KK, and then that activates the third kinase, which is just the MAP kinase. So the MAP kinase is acted on by the MAP kinase kinase, and the MAP kinase kinase is activated by the MAP kinase kinase kinase. Now it seems a silly nomenclature and a silly way to describe proteins, but RAF, MEC, and ERK is simply one set of proteins that um, can be thought of as being part of the MAP um, kinase pathway. And there's a whole bunch of other proteins which follow this three kinases in a row that activate each other. Okay, And so we have this nomenclature here, this MAP KKK, through down, through down to the MAP kinase, um, because there are different proteins that can, can, can act in that manner. But we're only going to look at one pathway, so we'll just talk about RAF, MEC, ERK as our generic MAP kinase pathway. So once RAS is activate, activated, its effector loop is exposed, it binds to RAF. Okay? Now RAF is then activated, and it can phosphorylate MEC. Once MEC is phosphorylated, it becomes active and it will phosphorylate ERK. And once ERK is phosphorylated, it becomes activated and it will act as a transcription factor to turn on a whole bunch of genes. Okay, so RAS activates a downstream signaling pathway to turn on gene expression. And this downstream signaling pathway is the MAP kinase pathway. So MAP kinase pathway is RAF, MEC, and ERK. Each phosphorylates the other, which causes a shift in structure, which results in its functional activation. Um, one note here is that RAS itself is not a kinase, and we've discussed how RAS is switched on through nucleotide exchange. And I guess another point I should point out is that none of these kinases are tyrosine kinases. They're all serine threonine kinases. 
Okay. So what we now have is pretty much a complete pathway. And we have um, a ligand leading to activation of a receptor. And then through these adapters and enzymes, we get activation of the RAS molecule. And then we get downstream signaling from RAS through the MAP kinase pathway to turn on um, a transcription factor leading to gene expression, leading to a change in cell phenotype. So now we can see how these um, early intermediate genes and you know are turned on, and we can see how a growth factor leads to um, a signaling pathway to turn on gene expression. And we know from looking at these normal proteins that are involved in cell signaling that in cancers, many of these normal proteins are either hyperactivated or, um, or inactivated. Um, leading to um, more cell growth. Okay, so these pathways contain some key players which when mutated tend to um, lead to uncontrolled cell proliferation. So we can think of cancer as a disease of cell proliferation or a disease of cell signaling. It's basically the same thing because one controls the other. So in this pathway now we have a growth factor leading to activation of a tyrosine kinase receptor, leading to the activate, activation of um, GRB2. So GRB2 is an adapter that binds to the phosphorylated tyrosine. And then GRB2 can bind to SOS. SOS is a guanine exchange factor that activates RAS to turn it on. And then RAS activates RAF by binding to it through its effector loop. RAF is a kinase which phosphorylates MEC, which is a kinase which phosphorylates ERK. ERK's transcription factor turned on, turns on gene expression, leading to new protein synthesis um, and a change in cell phenotype. So there's so even though I showed you some slides earlier with all these complicated cell pathways. Here is a linear signaling pathway. Now clearly it's going to branch out and do other things. We're not concerned with all that branching. We just want to consider the, I mean, it's not simple, but it's the simplest pathway that we can get from a growth factor to gene expression. Um, and that involves RAS, okay? Because we know RAS is an important oncogene. And it's this idea if we understand normal cell signaling, we can understand cancer cell signaling.